Okay, I'm on a Linux machine here. That's what this funky little tux image at the top means. But you know what? It really doesn't matter if this is running on my laptop, like inside of a virtual machine, on bare metal in my own on-premises data center, or up in some super sexy cloud somewhere. It makes zero difference as far as how Docker works. In fact, you know what? We're now living in a world where I could be doing all of this on Windows. So this could be like native Windows server containers or Docker for Windows on my laptop or even Docker for Mac if that was my thing. The point is, irrespective of platform and operating system, you're going to get the exact same Docker experience. Anyway, Docker version, this is always the first command that I run whenever I get logged on to a Docker host. Now, look, okay, before I say anything else, I'm running commands here on Linux as root. Now, I'm absolutely not recommending that you do that. I'm just trying to keep things as simple as possible here. So, you know, definitely no sudo prefixes or anything, because I want this to be as platform agnostic as possible. Now, back on paste. The output here is broken into two sections, client and server. At the top here, we get the version details of the client bits and pieces. And then down here, we get the same for the server or the daemon bits. And if you've been following along with the install lesson, then these are the client and server versions running locally on the machine that you're logged on to. I'm saying this right because it is possible to point the Docker client to a remote daemon somewhere on the other end of the network. We're just not doing that here. Okay, well, Docker info, this is another good one. So right up at the top here, right, we can see how many containers and images that we've got. Okay, not a lot right now. Then below that, we've got a wealth of version information. So generally speaking, right, this is a really good command for seeing how things are on your Docker host. Now, we're not going to get into the weeds here. That's for like my Docker deep dive course. But feel free to take a closer look in your own time. But come on, I'm waffling. Let's run a container. So keeping it simple, we go docker run and hello world. I mean, really? How simple does that look? Okay. All right, that didn't take long, but what are we looking at? Okay, <laughs> this is doing my job for me. So just let me cover this up while we step through what just happened there. First up, right, we typed a command docker run hello world. Well, all docker commands start with the docker keyword, if you will, calling the docker binary in the background, yeah? We then said run, that's the standard way of saying, hey, docker, go run me a new container, please. And then we said, oh, you know what? Run that container based on the hello world image. Then we hit return. The client went and talked to the daemon. The daemon checked if it had a copy of that hello world image stored locally didn't so that's what we see here with this unable to find image hello world latest locally that meant the daemon had to go away and pull the image from a place called docker hub more on that in a second so it pulls the image which is just a fancy way of saying it grabs its own copy yeah and it used that image as a template to create a new container now it's a really simple container yeah or image right all it did was print a load of text to the screen, then it exited. So it was a super short-lived container. Prints text to the screen, exits. Meaning, if we run a docker ps command, right, no containers currently running. Though, if we whack the minus a flag onto the end of that, see how it shows as a container that was running, but is now exited. Well, that's obviously our container that we just ran. And that right is a command that you're going to probably use a lot, docker ps, list running containers. Remember, slap minus a onto the end, and you can see containers that you have run, but are now exited. So if we now run docker info again, back up here at the top, yeah, we now see one container, one in a stopped state, and one image. Well, we've seen the container with docker ps, so to see the image, funnily enough, we go docker images. And there it is. Right. For now, okay, think of repository as just the image name, hello world. All images get tagged, that means we can act like grown-ups and version them. Every image gets its own unique hash. This one was created a few weeks ago, and well, it's a whopping 967 bytes in size. Okay, well, that's just magic. We've done a docker run to run a container, 
dock a PS to see info about running and stop containers, and dock images to see info about images, but just images actually that are stored locally. But I think that's a great start. We've got a few commands in the arsenal now, and we've run a container. But I want to take a quick step back for a second and have a quick visual recap of what went on behind the scenes, just to solidify this before we move on to working with slightly more complex containers.